In this video, I'll be checking out the Blackview DR900X two-channel plus camera bundle that was released by Pitasoft in September of 2021. This was a production review sample sent by Pitasoft to me free of charge. I'm allowed to keep the camera after the review, but it's not a paid or sponsored video. I'll be comparing it with the Blackview DR900X previous generation of the camera, and I'll have some samples from a Blue Sky C B4K camera, the front and rear cameras as well. We'll be going through the new features, the improved video quality, the improved image sensor in the rear camera, talk about the seamless pairing using Bluetooth to make it easier to connect over Wi-Fi, and the hotspot functionality of the front camera has been enhanced. If you have the optional CM100 LTE internet connectivity device, you can now have up to five Wi-Fi enabled devices connect through the front camera and also connect to the internet. So let's get into it. This video is broken into a variety of chapters. If there's one of particular interest to you, look at the time index and jump to that section or expand the description section of this video and use the link in that section. Now let's get into the video. This video will focus on a comparison between the DR900X two-channel plus and the previous generation of the DR900X two-channel, which I have a full review series for that and the CM100 LTE, which I will be connecting to this camera as well. So check out the link in the description section for that full video series. I have a 64 gigabyte micro SD card provided with this particular one that was sent to me by Pitasoft. And the contents of the box look pretty much the same. Of course, we have a different user manual here and the wiring accessories and mounting equipment is virtually identical to the previous generation. Here we have a comparison of the internal processor and image sensors. You can see that the processor went from the V100 to the V200, and then the Sony Starbus sensor in the rear camera changed from the 291 to the 327 version of the sensor, making for better image quality. They were able to concentrate using the better processor on the front camera using the same image sensor and new firmware, reducing some of the options you have in the firmware for exposure settings to concentrate on better image quality. There are some changes in the firmware settings for this newer camera, and in the video settings section you can see that several were removed. The first one we'll talk about is the video codec. The new camera only records using the H.264 codec, which is the older, more compatible video codec. You used to have the option of H.265, but that's been removed in this new camera firmware. The next one removed is the HDR night vision setting, which in the older DR900X I had to set to being on only in parking mode to prevent some red purplish flares that would show up in the video during certain lighting situations during daytime recording. The brightness settings for both the front and rear cameras have been removed in the new DR900X Plus, so the upgraded processor and firmware are making those adjustments on their own. The selection process for the low voltage cutoff value has been improved to allow you to pick incremental values of 0.1 volts at a time versus the three predefined cutoff values that are available in the previous version of the camera. If you're using the optional Blackview Cloud service, the SIM card activation, if you're using the CM100 LTE device, or your Wi-Fi settings have been moved to a new menu option setting on the main list of options available for the camera setup. There's now a new seamless pairing process to get it connected with your Blackview app. It uses Bluetooth to make that connection initially, allow you to select the device, and over Bluetooth that information is shared, allowing you to then connect over Wi-Fi to the camera more easily. If you're using the optional Blackview CM100 LTE connectivity device, you can now share that internet connection with up to five Wi-Fi enabled clients. The previous generation only supported one Wi-Fi client. You might be wondering whether you can use some of the existing equipment in your vehicle, such as the mounts and the wiring. There is a page on the Blackview site that I have a link down in the video description that will go through all of that. Related to cabling, the power cables are unique to the X-Series, so if you have a non-X-Series camera, you will have to install a new power adapter or power wiring for the camera. For the video cable, everything other than the 590 series video cable should be able to be reused. One thing to be aware of if you're upgrading to the 900X Plus, the single channel version of the 900X Plus does have the connectivity port for the rear camera. So if you want to upgrade from an older camera to this one, 
reusing the rear camera. The only one that's compatible at this point in time is the DR750X Plus rear camera. Here are the cameras I have installed in my 2014 Chevrolet Caprice Police Patrol vehicle. On the extreme left of the picture, on the passenger side, we have the new Blackview DR900X Plus camera with the improved main processor. In the center, we have the older generation 900X. And on the extreme right, I have a camera from Blue Sky C, their B4K model. All front cameras have their CPL filters installed. Here's an inside view of the Blackview cameras. On the right, we have the new DR900X Plus. I have the CM100 LTE connectivity module plugged into it. That's what the USB connector is on the top center portion there, the rear camera and the power, which is connected to a dash cam battery pack for parking mode support. In the rear, the arrangement's a little different. On the extreme right is the older DR900X rear camera. I had that installed there because the cable length reached just to that point. So it was important I had the ability to reverse the image from the rear camera. The newer camera with the DR900X Plus is in the center and the Blue Sky C is on the left hand side. Please note that the Blue Sky C B4K camera installation being a dual channel does have the frame rate reduced to 24 frames per second. That will cause the playback in this YouTube video being 30 frames per second to be a little bit choppy but the rear video camera footage you'll notice will be extremely choppy. That is a known issue with the rear video footage from this particular camera and has been reported to Blue Sky C and they hope to fix it possibly in a future firmware release. Blackview has added the seamless pairing feature to all their late model cameras. The models that have firmware updates or initial releases of firmware that have that feature are listed in the lower left of this screen. And the minimum Blackview app version is on the lower right portion of this screen. If you don't have the latest version, go check out on the Blackview website, download the latest firmware and update the camera with that firmware. It uses Bluetooth to publish the identity of the camera. You select that within the app and then over the Bluetooth connection, it will share the Wi-Fi password, thus making it so that you do not have to type in the password, making it easier and hopefully more secure. I have upgraded the older DR900X camera with version 1.008 firmware, which includes this new feature. It's the same process for the DR900X Plus as far as the general steps. So I recorded the session of me using seamless pairing with the DR900X. So let's get into that now. Connect to camera. And then we still have the 900X Plus there. I'm going to tell it to add. It finds the 900X, the older model. And now I'm going to go ahead and move my hand by the proximity sensor. It found the identity. I'll leave it at the default. And now it's added that to the app. So I'm going to click on that and then it'll ask me to join the Wi-Fi network for that. And I'm now connected over Wi-Fi to that camera. In this test setup, I have the vehicle facing into the sun, no CPLs on either Blackview camera, and you can see much better exposure to the side of the image here in the plus version of the video. It looks more like a tunnel vision image on the older DR900X. Now let's take a look at the full screen of the older camera. And again, you see more of a centered video, clear image here with the older camera and everything on the extreme seems to be kind of darkened on the edges. That's why I didn't really love what I was getting with the older DR900X, but it was acceptable in most cases. Now let's look at that same time sequence from the DR900X Plus. Again, no CPL on this one. It's handling the exposure its own, where the 900X, I had a the default exposure value of three. Much better video image. I'd be able to see a lot more of what's going on on the edges in case something came in from the sides. And this looks pretty good. Now we're taking a look at the 900X Plus with the Blue Sky C B4K camera. It has its CPL filter on the B4K camera. And the image is a little brighter, maybe a bit grainier though with the Blue Sky C. Although the Blue Sky C, when configured with two cameras as it is now, records at 24 frames per second. Now we're taking a look at the rear camera footage from that same scenario. The sun is to the front of the vehicle, so the 
DR900X Plus seems to have a little bit darker image overall. The exposure seems to be a little darker here compared to the older camera at exposure level three. Again, neither of the rear cameras here have a CPL filter on them. And here is the older DR900X at exposure setting three with the Sony Starvis IMX291 sensor. It was okay. I never really had a real complaint except at night. It was very tunnel vision like and on the edges here it still is a little bit dark. Now let's take a look at the 900X Plus video here. Again a little brighter on the edges so again you get to see a little bit more on the edges than I used to see with the older one. The quality seems to be about the same. Again remember this video is scaled from 1080p to 4k for this YouTube video so it may get a little pixelated in some cases from being stretched for that. And now we're going to compare it with the Blue Sky C B4K rear camera at 24 frames per second with that video footage. So it will have a bit of jitter, stutter in it when compared to the 900X Plus video. I seem to like the 900X Plus video from the rear camera, so the improvement using the new sensors seems to be a good step forward. Changing the test by having the sun behind the vehicle, same hardware configurations for the cameras, 900X Plus video footage on the top, 900X older camera on the bottom. The newer plus footage seems to have a kind of a brown color to it all throughout. Here's the older 900X full screen, and the colors represent more natural colors as I see them in real life. Although there's a darkness down by the dashboard and you can almost see that circular hole in the middle where there's kind of that tunnel vision, especially at night. And here's the plus one with no CPL and that general brown color to it but the dashboard is brightened up and the edges are brighter. So the overall image quality is better, but the color is not as realistic as I would like it to be. Now comparing the 900X plus footage on the top with the Blue Sky C B4K camera on the bottom, it does have a CPL filter and we'll have a bit of jitter here at 24 frames per second versus 30. I like the color representation from the B4K camera a little bit better. Looking at the rear cameras now with the sun facing the back of the vehicle, Video again scaled it from 1080p to 4K. The plus footage is better. I like it because you can see a lot more of the usable image, especially down at street level. And if you look at the 900X older camera, rear camera footage with the 291 sensor, it's got this little center section that you can see stuff, but the edges are just so dark. I never liked that with especially night footage from the older rear camera. Now we'll take a look at the DR900X plus footage for the rear camera with the Sony Starvis IMX327 sensor. Very decent, although the sun's a little bit blown out here, but I can see a lot more usable information in this video image compared to the older camera footage. And now comparing the 900X rear camera to the rear camera from the Blue Sky C B4K, and they're reasonably similar, although the 24 frames per second makes it a bit jittery from the B4K camera, but the Plus camera's doing a good job. I've modified the test configuration here to have the Blackview clip-on CPL filters installed on both of the Blackview cameras. I've also modified the exposure setting on the older 900X from 3 to 4. The firmware for the 900X Plus no longer has brightness settings for the user to select, so it's based on its own internal logic. So I'm now looking at here a full screen of the 900X with CPL exposure setting 4. It's almost a bit too bright when it comes to the upper portion of the screen, but at least now you can see more of the edges than you could before. And I'll show you a comparison with and without CPL filters in a moment. Here's the 900X Plus with the CPL filter. Again, still a slight brown overall color here, but it's definitely usable and the CPL filter is certainly helping reducing the windshield reflections. So now let's look at the with and without CPL comparisons. These are two different days. That's why they're not perfectly in sync with each other. But you can definitely see the without CPL and exposure setting three from the 900X is too dark for being usable, especially being pointed into the sun. And here's the 900X Plus on the two different days. And with the CPL installed, it's minimized the windshield reflection, so that's helpful. So the overall image usability, I think, is very good with the 900X Plus and the CPL, but you shouldn't run it with the CPL at night. Now comparing the 900X Plus footage on the top versus the B4K footage on the bottom, I still like the Blue Sky C B4K footage as far as color selection or representation over the 900X Plus, but the quality overall is still better on the 900X Plus. This is a continuation of the CPL installation test, but with the front of the vehicle facing away from the sun. 
The 900X Plus footage is on the top and the older 900X on the bottom. The CPL installed on the 900X, the older camera with exposure settings set to four, still looks a bit overexposed. So here it is full screen, but at least you can make out the hood and the dashboard and the CPL is certainly helping reduce the windshield reflections. So that's a plus. Setting it back down to three might again get that tunnel vision look to it. So I'm gonna probably leave it at four. The 900X Plus footage with its own brightness adjustments internal logic because again the firmware doesn't allow you to select that any longer still has a brown color to it at least according to my eyes in the middle section here but the dashboard and the hood are decent and we can take a look now between two different days the 900x with and without cpl as you'll see in the screen i still prefer the overall look to the 900x with the cpl installed exposure settings set to four even though it might be a bit overexposed Here's the DR900X Plus footage with and without a CPL. And the upper footage is with the CPL. And I like the colors in that particular video footage compared to without the CPL. And again, more of a brown hue in that without CPL footage. Now we're taking a look at the Blue Sky CB 4K footage on the bottom with CPL versus the DR900X Plus with CPL on the top. The quality of the 900X footage is better, but I like the colors from the B4K better. Now let's start checking out some nighttime footage. We have the 900X Plus on the top and the older 900X on the lower section. I have removed the CPL filters from both of them per the instructions from Blackview not to use the CPL filters when recording video at night. And I've left the exposure or brightness setting at four for the front camera on the older DR900X. It didn't brighten enough compared to the video footage we're getting out of the Plus camera. I was hoping that would be comparable in brightness, but it's still not. If we take a look at the full screen under the bridge here, it's quite dark on the edges. And we'll look at the plus video in a little bit. You'll see a little bit more detail of the bridge brickwork there on the edge of the roadway. So I think the newer processor in the plus camera is doing a better job at making sure the video is of good quality and appropriate brightness day and night. So here's the plus version and you can definitely see more detail on the edges and it's overall just more usable video here comparing the 900X Plus versus the Blue Sky C B4K front camera still with its CPL filter installed. I have to say I prefer the Plus video footage now. The older generation 900X I did not. I preferred B4K at that point, but now I prefer the Plus video. Now let's check out the rear video footage. We have the Blackview DR900X Plus upgraded rear camera with the Sony Starvis IMX327 image sensor. And on the lower section is the older rear camera. And you notice that there was some missing frames there, or at least I flashed a text banner saying missing frames. That's a bug I reported in my full review of the DR900X camera. And it's present also in the 900X Plus camera. It happens at every file transition for the rear camera and that's every one minute. So it will lose about 22 to 25 frames. Pitasoft has acknowledge the bug and their engineering department is working on the issue. So hopefully there will be a firmware release in the very near future fixing that issue. Here's the older DR900X rear camera with the IMX291 sensor. And here's the video gap here at the file transition. And it's again dark around the edges, much like the front camera. It's just not as good as it could be. And now here's the plus version of the video and it's definitely better on the edges and overall much better and here's that video gap here so i wanted to demonstrate the fact that both the older 900x and the 900x plus rear cameras both have that file transition issue and one last comparison here i have the dr 900x plus video footage comparing against the rear camera from the blue sky c b4k rear camera with the imx 307 sensor definitely looks like they're bumping the iso quite a bit to get the brightness up there i prefer the dr 900x plus rear camera footage at this point. Let's see how well the cameras pick up the license plates. In my test, I have my vehicle stationary as well as the vehicles in front of me are stationary. I have the first and last characters of each license plate blurred out in case there's any privacy concerns about the plates and the vehicles I'm displaying in the video. And you can see the DR900X plus camera on the top section is far more clear compared to the older generation DR900X camera. It's not a perfectly clear image on the new camera, but it's far better detailed than the older camera. Now let's switch it up and compare it against the Blue Sky C B4K camera on the lower section. And you can see that the detail from the B4K camera is better than the older DR900X, but the new DR900X Plus camera with the 
new processor, same image sensor as the old camera, but the new processor is getting a better level of detail in this video footage. So I have to say in the license plate detail comparison, 900X plus wins. The first item on my feature wish list for the DR900X plus camera is the bug fix resolving the drop frames issue for the rear camera when it has the file transitions to occur every one minute. Pitasoft says they understand the issue, so we should see it soon. I would like to see a power button or switch added to the front dash camera to allow you to power down the camera when you're parked at home, thus saving the dash cam battery pack's charge level and stopping any unnecessary writes to the micro SD card. A small thing I would like to see change is a slightly longer rear camera video cable. It was a bit too short for my car, so that's why I had to rotate the rear camera and set the firmware setting to rotate the video image for the rear camera. One extra meter would make a big difference. I'd like to propose a new firmware setting to allow you to disable the motion-based parking mode. If you have it set up with a three-wire hardwiring connection with native parking mode, there's really no need for the motion-based parking mode. At least give it as an option for the users that want to turn it off. If you're considering the purchase of one of the Blackview DR900X Plus Series cameras, you can go to Blackview's website where the two-channel version is being offered for $489.99 US dollars and the single channel version is being offered for $379.99. If you'd like to save an additional $20 off the Blackview website price, check out blackboxmycar.com or blackboxmycar.ca, and the US dollar price for the two channel version is $469.99, and the single channel price is $359.99. If you'd like to save an additional 5% off that price, make sure you use the affiliate link down in the video description section, and if that doesn't give you the 5% discount, Type in discount code RCG530 for Retro Car Guy 530, and you'll receive a 5% discount on any purchase over $250 US or $300 Canadian. Here are my final thoughts about the Blackview DR900X two channel plus cameras after working with them for the past couple of weeks. The upgraded main processor going from the V100 to the V200 version of the processor and the rear image sensor being upgraded to the Sony Starvis IMX327, along with the firmware tweaks by Pitasoft, has certainly resulted in much better video quality, especially at the edges of the video, where that seemed to be the thing that was lacking the most in the previous generation of this camera bundle. So I'm very pleased with the changes that have been made here. This brings the video quality to the level that I would expect for a camera at this price point. The addition of the seamless pairing feature allowing you to add the camera or connect to the camera from the Blackview app using Bluetooth connectivity to publish the identity and Wi-Fi password to the app makes it much easier to add the camera to your Blackview app. I really like the fact that the Wi-Fi hotspot capabilities of the front camera have been upgraded to support up to five Wi-Fi clients. So if you have the optional Blackview CM100 LTE connectivity device to gain access to the Blackview cloud service, you can now share that connection with up to five devices in your car, turning a car that never had hotspot capabilities into one that's internet enabled. Overall, I'm very pleased with the changes made to this particular upgraded camera. The DR900X two-channel plus cameras are a great step forward from the previous generation. The video quality is at the level I would expect. So if you're looking for a new camera for your vehicle or upgrading from a previous generation, you might want to check this one out. Again, check out the links in the description section for links to Blackview site, Blackbox My Car, and any other affiliate links are a great way of supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. And if you found that this video is informational to you or entertaining in some way, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos just like this to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.